You may never have heard of triclosan, but chances are you have used a product that contains the substance. Minnesota recently passed nation-leading legislation banning it in products. Senator John Marty is here to explain exactly why. Senator, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Let's begin. Triclosan, triclosan, however you'd like to say it, it's found in things like antibacterial soap, toothpaste. Why is it considered harmful? Well, the point is for it was, I would argue, was largely sold as a marketing ploy to sell products. If, if you and I are both selling soft soap, liquid soaps, um, how do I say mine's better than yours? Mine smells better, it looks better, well, who cares? Um, maybe the smell is the one thing you could do, but now we could say, my soap is better than yours because it kills bacteria. It's got an antibacterial agent in it, and triclosan does kill some bacteria. The trouble is, um, you know, we, from the beginning, a lot of doctors have been saying, we're not sure this does any better than ordinary soap. Washing with your hands with ordinary soap does just as well. And there have been growing concerns along the way about a new chemical like this. It's now 30, 40 years old. A chemical like this that may have other health and environmental consequences. And over the years, we've been learning more and more about those risks. And we're also finding no evidence that it does significant good to people. So the state health department, um, a lot of scientists and others have been pushing for years to get it banned, and Minnesota finally moved ahead and took the nation-leading step in this. So when something is banned statewide, what is the process to try to keep it off of the shelves? Well, what we do, first of all, the ban does not take effect until January 2017. So by that time, my hope is actually our legislation will have more of an impact prior to that than it will after that because I think one, other states are likely to copy this, and number two, it puts more pressure on the industry to change. And because of the growing concerns about risks, there's a University of Minnesota professor who did some um, groundbreaking research that showed that triclosan in, in our wastewater system, from people washing with it in the wastewater system, breaks down into form, certain forms of dioxin, which is harmful to aquatic life. It's not something we want to have out there. and so. That gives us reason to say, why are we using this if it doesn't do much good or it doesn't do any good? And so we decided, let's move forward on this. And the pressure this will help put on the industry is changing it very quickly from a marketing advantage to a marketing disadvantage. There still is one toothpaste product that includes um, triclosan, but now one of the leading competitive brands is marketing all of their toothpastes. We're triclosan free. In other words, they're saying, this is something bad, stay away from it. And I think that's the reality. People are beginning to realize their risks. It's a hormone disruptor in animals. Does that mean it is in humans? Likely. Um, that's not good. We don't want to take those additional risks, especially when there's no proven advantage of this. And so, Senator, you talked about the industry pressure. Let's talk, of, let's go back a few years ago when Minnesota banned bisphenol A, BPA, also known as BPA, and yet I was reading that according to a recent paper that was published in the journal Environmental Health, there are still several products being sold that contain bisphenol A despite these bans, and they include Avent baby bottles, Camelback sippy cups, you know, things that a lot of people use. So I guess it begs the bigger question, how enforceable is something right, like this? Right. Well, first of all, you can't sell those products in Minnesota. Uh, the bisphenol A things, you cannot sell the baby products with that in Minnesota. That doesn't stop. We're one fiftieth of the market. Some of them may figure, ah, Minnesota is just a blip, we'll ignore it, which is why this triclosan ban in Minnesota would not be a big deal except for the fact that it fits into this growing pressure. Um, the FDA is reviewing it again. They had determined it was okay a number of years ago, but their latest, if you check out their webpage, it says now that, well, there have been new scientific studies that have come along since then, so we're re-reviewing the issue. And my prediction is they will get rid of it. They'll voluntarily, they'll cut an agreement with the industry to voluntarily stop producing it because the FDA rarely bans substances. They usually just, that way the industry can save face. Oh, we're not going to, we're not going to acknowledge those health claims where health risks were real, um, but they can just take it off the market quietly. And I think that's likely to happen. Um, bisphenol A, I think the same thing will happen. It's taking more time. And basically, once a state like Minnesota does it, a lot of other states sometimes two years later or so follow suit. In the, this particular case, I think it will happen faster than that. So is it fair to say that this is more, uh, this is really a consumer issue where consumers need to be educated and be looking to make sure that the products that they purchase don't contain 
bisphenol A or in this case triclosan? Well, it's, it's interesting. I talked with a reporter overseas who was asking about this ban and they, they asked, well, what about the fact the FDA has allowed this? And I said, that's because in our country, the regulatory system doesn't work on what one might call the precautionary principle. If there's a risk, maybe we should be careful and err on the side of public health and the environment rather than selling the product anyway. In our system, it's almost you have to have almost incontrovertible proof that it's harmful before we'll take it off the market. And I was explaining this to somebody overseas and they, well, don't people expect that the government agencies are going to make sure something that might be dangerous to them isn't allowed to be sold? I think that's the public perception, but that's not the reality. So yes, we want to educate the public. A ban like this and the talk about it does educate people, starts raising more concerns. And, and I, I would guess that that one toothpaste company that still says they contain triclosan, I'm going to guess that in a few years they'll pull it off the market voluntarily because they're getting beat up too much by their competitors who brag that they're triclosan free. And so, just to follow up, this takes a, it actually takes effect in about three years, two yes, and a half years. Yes, two and a half years, and I think the real impact is before then because my hope is there's not much triclosan on the market to ban by then. That actually this will have the impact of speeding up what I think is happening with triclosan anyway, and consumers don't want harmful things in their bodies, and three quarters of us have triclosan in our bodies. It's included in mother's breast milk nowadays. Um, it's, that's the trouble. We don't, these are chemicals that we don't know the safety of. We have some strong concerns about safety risks, and yet we produce them and we use them, and you, the consumer, may not have a clue what it's doing to you. Okay, with those words, Senator John Marty, thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time. My pleasure.